By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Roman from Germany. He's one of my patrons and he is bringing a classic mono red burn deck to the table, including a mana flare. And I am playing against it with a Titania's song deck called Titania's Rings. Um, if you'd like to go uh, to the games directly, that's what I'm trying to say here, you can check out the description below. Click on the timestamps, uh, timestamp, and that will take you straight to game number one. And uh, I'm going to continue with doing a little bit of deck tech, like always, and I'm going to start with the deck of Roman. And this is Roman's deck. It's a classical mono red burn deck. It really takes me back to the earlier days of Magic. This was one of the first really constructed decks out there, because it was just... It was such an obvious strategy, but also a very classical strategy. I really like mono color decks because they just bring out kind of that color pie old school feeling. And um, what we see here is he has a mana flare. And of course, you're going to combine mana flare with a dragon whelp because that's one of the coolest things you can do. For the people that don't know dragon whelp, for two red and two, you get a two, three flyer and you can pump it up. You can give it a plus one, plus oh, because it has this fire breathing effect built in. Uh, because it's a dragon, of course, and when you do it more than three times, it dies at the end of the turn. Uh, but of course, a unique thing about it is that it happens at the end of the turn. So you can just completely blow it up out of proportion. You can you can make a dragon whelp deal 20 damage, especially when you have a mana flare out and you're playing mono colored. Why not? And then you can really hurt your opponent. And um, when you spend less than three, so I should say three or less, uh, it becomes a 5-3, it also deals 5 damage, which is quite a lot, and it survives, so it stays around. Uh, interesting is that this Dragon Whelp doesn't see a lot of play in old school, or at least not where I play old school, which is kind of interesting because it is a very strong creature. It is only 4 mana for a 2-3 th flyer that potentially can become 5-3 and potentially can even become you know much, much bigger. Uh, because you can just keep pumping red mana into it. So I'm really looking forward to see that combo in, in Roman's deck because it's just such a classical combo. Obviously, he's also playing with X spells, X direct damage spells. I believe Earthquake Quake is in there. I'm pretty sure Fireball will be in there because, you know, he wants to deal direct damage with this deck. Another really cool and flavorful card here is Bull Lightning. So Bull Lightning, three to cast, a 6-1 creature with haste when the term haste didn't exist yet. So it says Bull Lightning is unaffected by summoning sickness and it's got Trample and, of course, it dies at the end of the turn. Now, the difficult thing with that is because it dies at the end of the turn, it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to sorts it because, you know, when he plays the sorts on this, he knows, okay, I'm not going to take six damage, which is great, but I'm killing a creature that's going to go away at the end of turn anyway, and I'm losing my sorts, and I'm giving six more life to my opponent who's playing direct damage, and all he really wants to uh, get or more life so he can kind of build up his mana base and throw a giant fireball at my face. So it's really difficult to play against these bull lightnings. Again, it's one of those cards that sees a less play. Uh, I believe Mace of If is one of the reasons for that. And of course, a lot of first strike creatures in the old school format. So those are really difficult when you're a bull lightning player. You really have to time your bull lightning. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if Roman can time his bull lightnings at the right moment. And then we also have Shatter. Shatter, of course, is kind of an Angst Gegner for me, keeping it German here because Roman is from Germany. Um, Shatter can destroy artifacts. And, and as you know, I'm playing with the Titania's songs. I'm playing with a lot of artifacts. So Shatter is definitely, definitely a danger. And maybe he's also playing with Shatterstorm in his sideboard, maybe even main, I don't know, but that's another big red flag for me. Get it, red flag, mono red. Red flag. Okay. Anyway, another card that I think is a great inclusion in most mono brews is Navanerals Disc. The thing is, when you're playing mono colors, you're not as flexible as when you're playing with multiple colors. And what Navanerals Disc does, it solves problems. And that's why I think it's a great inclusion in this mono colored brew. And actually, in most mono colored brews, a Navanerals Disc one or two is probably the best option. In this case, of course, it's a great weapon against enchantments. For example, uh, let's say your opponent is playing with, I don't know, Circle of Protection Red. Use your disc, blow it up, you know? So it's 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 just a great tool to solve problems. So nice deck, nice classical deck. If you're watching this video and you're on a smaller budget, um, if this if you find this deck interesting, you can build it. It's pretty cheap to cheap to build. So keep an eye on this, uh, this brew. If you like it, it's affordable. Let's take a look at my deck. 
and I am playing with Titania's Rings uh, today, and this deck is based, or named after, I should say, two uh, cards, Titania's Song and Aladdin's Ring. Now, Aladdin's Ring, of course, this classical artifact that is basically unplayable, cast it for eight, and then you think, what do I have? Well, actually, if you pay eight and tap it, it can do deal four damage to any target. So not even eight damage, four damage to any target. So that means that when if you want to play it and activate it in the same turn, you need 16 mana. Insane, right? But in this case, I want to play it as an 8-8 eight, eight for 8. And then it sounds a lot better, of course. An 8-8 eight, eight for 8 with no drawbacks. Amazing and old school magic. Now, um, I want to do that with the card Titania's Song. Now, in case you don't know the card, it's 1 green and 3. It's an enchantment. And it makes all your non-creature artifacts in play lose all their usual abilities and turn into creatures with power and toughness equal to the casting cost. So that's why my Aladdin's Ring becomes an 8-8. As you can see in the deck picture, I'm obviously playing with a lot of artifacts. My Tomes are turning into 4-4s, four my Nevernoral's Discs are turning into 4-4s, four my Basilic Monoliths are turning into 3-3s, three etc, etc. Um, the technique of this, this deck is actually quite obvious. I want to ramp like crazy with my Llanowar Elves, with my playset of Birds of Paradise. I just want to ramp, ramp, ramp play out all my artifacts, draw extra cards with my tomes, possibly blow up stuff before I can draw into my Titania Song with my Nevernerals Discs. Because I play with multiple Nevernerals Discs, I am willing to pl blow them up pretty quickly. It's not like I'm only playing a one-off. I'm playing three of these, so I can use a couple. It doesn't matter. In my ideal scenario, I would have a situation on the board where I have a couple of artifacts out. Let's say Aladdin's Ring, uh, a tome, maybe also a scepter and then i can play out my armageddon and my titania song in one go that means that i'm going to blow up all the lands with my armageddon and turn all my artifacts into creatures with my titania song and that my opponent has no lands to respawn anymore and i can simply trample all over him um, a nice thing to note about this deck, again, this is uh, it's not as budget friendly as the mono red deck that you saw earlier, but it's also pretty pretty budget friendly, I guess. If you take out the savannas, those are the four dual lands you see there at the top, and you would replace them, for example, um, with City of Brasses from Chronicles, um, this is a pretty doable list. Of course, there are a few cards that are a bit more uh, expensive, like the Birds of Paradise, for example. You know, I believe if you want to get them fourth edition, um, there are what is it between around 15 euros a piece? I'm not quite sure I'm not on top of the prices, but so they're still pretty expensive, but overall for an old school brew, it's pretty budget friendly if you would take out those dual lands and you would replace them uh, with City of Brasses from the Chronicles edition. Um, so yeah, this is my deck list. Um, I'm really afraid for those shatters or possibly shatter storms. So, and of course the direct damage situation. Uh, but hey, we're just going to see what's, what's going to happen, right? So let's go to game number one. Game number one, and I'm sitting on the left, of course, with the Timmy playmat. My opponent, Roman, on the right side with a pretty cool Triskelion playmat. And I've got a good start here. Lana Rails, turn one. This is what I want to do. I want to ramp, and there's a basic mountain from Roman. I believe it's from Ice Age. Very cartoony mountain. Oh, look, he wants to... Oh, no! Bolt on the elf! Ay, 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 it's a classic. Unfortunately, I don't have a Birds of Paradise, and I could say Bolt the Bird, but that didn't happen. Uh, playing another Llanowar Elf, and let's see, another white mana. Having four mana, four is a pretty important number, because I have so many artifacts that play with four. I play a channel, and I'm playing a book. Wow. So I get, I, I mean, I'm taking a ton of damage, right? Why am I still on 19? I believe I'm playing, I should change. I believe I'm on 14 instead of 19 here. Anyway, I'm not drawing into anything. End step and look at that. It looks like Roman, he's just played the Diamond Valley and he's stuck on land. So that's given me an opportunity to kind of take advantage of course with that book. I should be able to draw into something. Oh, discarding a smoke. That's such a cool card. That can actually do something against me. Unfortunately for Roman, he's not finding any lands. And to make matters worse, I'm drawing into a disrupting scepter. So I'm going to start to discard things. So just to clarify, my life total is actually, um, it's actually 14. So it's not 19 as it says over there. 
Attacking him now for one with the Lunar Elf. So that's first... Well, Chana was first blood, but uh, Roman is now on 19. Untapping everything. I should be able to find something, right? Is there a Titania song coming? There's a Titania song coming. And now all of a sudden I can swing in for 9 damage because my Tome and my Disrupting Scepter are turning into creatures. So that means I've got a 4-4 artifact, artifact creature and a 3-3 three, three artifact creature. And, you know, this is not really a game because Roman is not really drawing into anything. So... Very unlucky here. Um, that's it. That's already the game. So this, at least it's it's game number one. So I'm sure he's not going to be this unlucky in game number two. Let's quickly go to game two and, um, and see if we can get a real game happening here. Game number two. And of course, it's Roman on the play here. That's a much better opening for him, starting with that Mana Vault turn one. No Birds of Paradise or Lunar Wells for me. Ay, ay, ay. Tapping here five. And there is a Dragon Whelp. And uh, let's see what I can do. Hopefully I've got a Swords to Plowsiers. Playing a Savannah passing turn. Maybe just going to do that um, in his combat phase. Why not? He's playing Mono Red, so he doesn't have any counter spells. Although, of course, he could then pump the Dragon Whelp and get some additional life. And looks like I'm just going through my hand a few times. Maybe I have multiple options, doubting if I want to keep uh, my swords, my white mana open, or thinking, what if I take some damage from the whelp and, and do my play first? But I'm just passing turn here. And I guess we're playing with mana burn, by the way, and that's the reason why he took the damage from the mana vault. Dealing damage here, I'm going to 15. And playing a forest, he's taking another damage from his vault, but I'm on 15 and he can hit me again for five if I just don't have a sword. It's just gonna attack first, of course, then go to five. Wow, I'm on 10 here, this is not a good sign. We saw game one that was very one-sided because he couldn't draw into anything. Okay, let's see what I can do now. A disc, okay, a disc, that's good, that's good. The thing is what Roman can do now is he can attack and he can think, you know what, he's got the disc, so I'm just gonna uh, blow up my own Dragon Whelp. Uh, but then if he would do that, he wouldn't um, give me a reason to use my disc. So I think this is actually the right decision. Putting me down on five life. Come on, untap that disc. I'm playing a little sloppy here. Exactly, untap that disc. Putting a forest right next to it. The question is always, are you going to blow it up? I guess I'm going to blow it up. So I'll have a follow-up play now, having four mana left still. Okay, tapping all for another disc. And this is what I talked about in the introduction with the deck tag is, because I'm playing with a lot of discs main, I don't really mind using them just to remove one creature. Oh, how cool is this? A Rock Hydra entering Flavor Town. Very nice Roman Rock Hydra. Very cool. And again, I'm using my disc. And oh, this is interesting. This is an interesting play. Wiping the board. Maybe I have some mana dorks in hand. I don't think so. I'm not doing it. Not playing it out. I guess I just have a lot of land, perhaps. Hoping to kind of win it that way. I mean, I'm on five life. Playing a Disrupting Scepter. Passing turn. Roman still being on 16. Playing a Soul Ring now. That's a really nice find for him. Good top deck. Disenchant. Wow. Maybe this disenchant is very important. Of course, I want to keep him as low on mana as possible. Drawing into another mountain. And he is playing with mono colored, so that means that the Armageddon strategy is not as strong. And look at that. Playing Basil Monolith, activating it immediately to use that disrupting scepter. And he's throwing away that Blood Moon. And Blood Moon is a great way to deal with Maze of Ifs, by the way, because Roman is also playing with Bull Lightnings. Shatter, ay, 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 taking care of my Disrupting Scepter. And of course, the Basil Monolith needs three more mana to untap, so I can do it now on his end step. But if Roman can find something... Oh, Earthquake, going to four. Untapping here. And let's see what I can do. And Roman just passing turn. And finding a Soul Ring, even more mana. Can I draw into a book? Can I just draw into something useful? 
What do I have in hand? Aladdin's ring or something? Tapping? Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> Tapping eight Aladdin's ring. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, uh, Aladdin's ring is a great card to play, but it's it's when you play it, you, you understand why not a lot of people use it. Uh, that's a third mountain. Ball lightning. That is game for Roman. Oh, and I'm showing him my swords to plowsiers that I actually had in my hand. But I wanted to play my eight mana costing Aladdin's ring. Oh, man. I mean, in all fairness, even if it would have swords the bull lightning, being on four against the burn deck, I mean, chances are very, very slim you're going to still win that one. Okay, so that means it's 1-1 one, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three, the decisive game. Let's see who wins this match. Oh, man, that bull lightning. That's something to keep in the back of my head. And having a good start here, again, just like with game one, Lana or Elves, that's what I want to do, get those ramp out as quickly as possible. Hopefully I can find a Birds of Paradise for some white mana. Attacking here, bringing Roman to 19. Lightning Bolt again, just like in game one. Uh, but it looks like Roman is finding his mana sources now. And there is a channel. And it looks like I'm taking three damage to cast my Tome. And I'm also going to take four extra damage because I want to draw a card. So I'm on 17. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I really like channel when you're playing with a lot of artifacts. It's really interesting. Of course, we all know the fireball channel combination, but I do love using channel just in this way very aggressively. Um, I'm not sure if it's the best trade paying all this life for just one card, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. Finding an extra forest, not really being able to play anything out or perhaps waiting to use my tome in his end step. There's mana number four here for Roman. Will we see another bull lightning? Oh, how cool! Dwarven Warriors. This is so cool. Of course, Dwarven Warriors combo um, with Dragon Whelp is another very classical combo in old school magic. It's really nice to see this. And he's attacking and we're actually just trading. I'm fine with that. Um, I'm actually a little bit afraid of that Dwarven Warriors. And wow, I'm finding my Birds of Paradise for the first time in this match. A Lightning Bolt. Bolt the bird. If that isn't old school magic, I don't know what is. I'm using my Tome to draw an extra one. Playing a Savannah passing turn here. So I really need those Tomes to kind of draw into my Titania songs. Um, and like in the in the tweaked version of this deck, I've actually added an extra Titania song because it's just too important to only play two. Uh, drawing another extra card here from the Tome. So Tome's doing a lot of work. And forgetting to do a land drop here. So Roman is allowing me to. Uh, and passing turn. There's a Shatter. And I think that's a very good move from Roman because the Tome was doing way too much work. Oh, and yeah, there we go. There we see another... Aladdin's Ring, we saw one in game number two. We're seeing one in game number three. Remember, Aladdin's Ring is eight mana to use every time. Will we see a Bull Lightning? Okay, we're seeing a Blood Moon. Not as effective against my deck as I'm playing with a lot of basics, but still that one card is turned into a basic mountain. And, ooh, there's a Titania Song attacking you with an 8-8. Eight, eight. This is what I want to do. And I'm playing a book. I've just got so much mana. So that book is now a 4-4 four, four creature as well. That means next turn I can hit Roman for 12. And that means since he's on 11, he needs to find a solution now. He needs to take... He needs a Shatter Storm. A Shatter Storm will do wonders here. Or just at least a Shatter on the Aladdin's Ring. Or at least a Blocker. Or he needs something. Let's see what he can, he can come up with. He wants to tap 4. So that could be a Dragon Whelp. Is he going to try to kill one with a fireball? But he just doesn't have enough mana to do that. Because he needs to... Well, I mean, he can take the book. He can take care of the book. That will at least give him one more turn. He doesn't have enough mana if he has a fireball to... Uh, let's see what he does. Ah, that's not going to help him because it comes into play tapped. Oh, this is interesting. A Gauntlet of Might... And of course, that turns into an artifact creature as well. So does the mana fold, by the way. So what I said about tapping it for mana, ignore that. It's just a 1-1 one, one creature. So Gauntlet of Might. So he can block. He just has two creatures to block right now. So actually, he's going to live another another turn. Or do I have or do I have Disenchant? 
uh, attacking with both creatures. So a 4-4 four, four and an 8-8. Eight, eight. And he's actually trading his Gauntlet of Might with my Tome and just chump blocking my Aladdin's Ring. Playing another 4-4 four, four, and oh, this is what I want to do. This is what a deck wants to do. When you're ahead, play that Armageddon. And that's it, that's it. Sorry, Roman. Sorry, but I have to say, I really, really, really like your deck. It's got some classical cards in there. I saw a Dwarven Lieutenant that you wanted to play. Really cool. I love this idea of Dwarven Warriors uh, in combination with um, the, uh, the Dragon Whelp. It's very classical. I also love the classical combo of Dwarven Lieutenant and Mana Flare because when you have Mana Flare, uh, you can use your Dwarven Lieutenant just for one red to give it plus one plus oh, so that's also pretty cool. Uh, if you've enjoyed this game as much as I did, uh, this match I should say, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, please subscribe if you're not a subscri subscriber yet. It really helps. The more subscribers I have, the better YouTube shows my videos. And of course, uh, you can also support me by leaving a like, sharing these videos on your social and just, you know, watching videos like you're already doing so thank you very much for that um we also have a patreon page so you can support the channel uh financially uh so that we can keep growing as well there's a link popping up right now you can click on there and it will take you to the timmy talks patreon page talking about the patrons let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the patrons of timmy talks what shall we do with the drunk Just think it is Samba Kazee!